Hey guys, good morning, happy Monday. Well, I say morning, I don't know when you're listening to this, but I uh, sure hope it's first thing in the morning, or at least that's when I record these messages. How is it going? Are you ready for Christmas? I'm wearing my red Christmas sweater, my red Christmas lipstick, and I'm having coffee. My son was asking me this morning, mom, do you love red? <laughs> because I have so much red going on right now. And I said to him, mostly at Christmas, son. And so, yeah, are you a fan of Christmas? I am, big time, big time, I'm a fan of Christmas. I don't know you, but I have the best memories of my childhood all surrounding Christmas. Story time with Olga. I come from a super large family and uh, an extended family and I'm South American. So the majority of South American families just are attached to the hip. Brothers, sisters, you know, aunts, uncles, grandparents, all of that. And my mom, my parents used to host Christmas for my mom's side of the family. And so we were 16 cousins. That's one six. All ranging from the ages of, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I think my, my oldest cousin might be 55. And the youngest is my brother, my youngest brother, who is 35. So, you know, that would be the range. And all of us will be in between those two ages. And it was a blast. Everybody would come. It was messy. It was lively. And so that took place until I moved to Canada. We hosted Christmas with, you know, all as the family grew, so did we. And so we had more spaces at the table. And I don't even remember we sat at the table. Probably not. Uh, we sat everywhere, wherever you found the spot. And just coming together to free play, to receive gifts, to eat. The idols were having a great time. There were like no rules. I don't know. I just, I loved it. I loved it. And it definitely impacted me growing up. It made me have such a strong feeling for celebration of Christmas. Um, it, for us, has never been all that religious, although I did grow up in a very Catholic upbringing. Uh, my parents never went to church or anything throughout Christmas, but it was all about family, which ends up being one of my highest values. So anyways, all of that to say that I itch to decorate my house for Christmas. As soon as Thanksgiving is over, <laughs> I start thinking, okay, why do we decorate for Christmas? Um, now I see that my son, who's four, loves Christmas too. He gets excited about it. And my husband. So I think it's contagious, this love for Christmas. The decorating of our home, the house feels so busy and like full of little things that are so, I don't know, magic, really. I feel that Christmas is magical. Uh, it's the time where I like to like manifest or think of what would I like to manifest. It is also the time, even though it's followed by Thanksgiving, where I like to just give thanks for all the things, including that feeling of joy that Christmas is arriving. I find it so beautiful. I also think of helping others. So at the time, at the moment, I've, I'm working with two pro bono clients who really needed a therapist. And although that is not a role that I like or that I am currently like really diving into heavily the therapist role, uh, I will if somebody really needs it. And definitely these two women need a therapist and they haven't been lucky to find one. And I just feel that it's, it's the time of the year where you just give. If you can, you do. Yeah, so I feel so privileged that I can now be the one that hosts Christmas at my house, my family. And so we're not 16 by any stretch. 
uh, but I'm just excited. I'm excited. Can you tell? I am excited. Uh, yesterday, I gave a talk to a large group of city workers here who do very special work for families. And it was such a privilege to do that and give a little bit back. And the, the subject we were talking about was work-life balance. Uh, a recent survey that they did in that particular team showed that most people were identifying as on the verge of burnout. And so a very proactive company hired me. I went, I gave this talk. I had a blast. I think they had a lot to, to walk away with. Um, and maybe maybe I'll do my next episode here on burnout prevention and work-life balance. Because I think that especially for us working parents, but not only, like one of the catering uh, servers said to me, I was so lucky to have heard you talk. She says, I am not a mom. I'm in my early 20s, but I'm a university student. I have two jobs and I truly believe I'm burning out. And it's true. It's not exclusive to parents. It's not exclusive to working uh, individuals. Burnout is real for anybody, anybody. If we essentially do too much of something and too little of essential things, we will all end up in burnout. So although I've done podcast in the past about burnout, I think I'm going to record one after this one on that. But today I want to talk to you about interrupting negativity. What? What is all that about? Interrupting negativity. We all know of People who are a bit negative, at least to us, we all know of uh, our inner dialogue that is not always so positive. Perhaps Christmas is one of those moments where you do have a dialogue that runs in the background that feels heavy and unhelpful. And that might be something that you want to interrupt. <laughs> I specifically wanted to title this interrupting negativity as a general statement because you could use these techniques to interrupt any kind of negativity, whether that is your negative self-talk, uh, a negative relationship, a negative interaction, a negative way of eating, a, neg a negative way of um, responding to your needs, you name it. I think there is something very exciting that is now being backed by science and research through the research of neuroplasticity that show us that we, in fact, can change our brains. Physically, we can change the brain. So how many of you think that your brain is not wired a certain way and is never going to be wired that way? Many of my clients who've got anxiety or have had a history of uh, being super high achieving or maybe have had a history of depression or anything that they feel like this is attached to my core. If we can identify the pattern of thoughts that bring them to that behavior, that mental habit, I can promise you that by mapping out a different way of thinking, we can interrupt and we can re begin to connect neurons in a completely different new way. What we know is that neurons cannot be disconnected. Once you have created a pathway, and that will always stay in your brain. But what neuroscience has done and showed us through photos and evidence is that we can create an alternative pathway of thought. And that one could become your automatic eventually. So that's sort of like the background science behind of interrupting. But I, I was listening to a previous coach of mine. She had a life, a uh, Facebook life that she did, I want to say, five years ago. Uh, and she was talking about interrupting different things, interrupting sales, interrupting emails, interrupting whatever she was talking about. She's a business coach. And the thought of interrupting, the idea, the concept, just spoke to me so much. I'm like, yes, that's what we do in coaching, actually. We interrupt all the time. Patterns of thought that are not helpful that are not giving us the results that we want. So think of this as a tool, as a perspective that will allow you 
to interrupt something that you're currently doing that perhaps you don't love so much. All right, so what comes to mind to you when you think I'm going to start interrupting negativity? I, as a, as, a, as a therapist and as a coach, mindset coach specifically, I can tell you that I have noticed, and as a woman with anxiety, I can tell you that it is my observation that the majority of us who've got something negative going on that's addictive, like anxiety, like criticizing, like gossiping, like drinking, like eating sugar, whatever, uh, that we are attached to that behavior. And we're so attached to that behavior that we think it's a lot of effort to break up from that behavior. And that is represented in every effort that we've tried to attempt to end the behavior. We just sabotage it, right? So I remember... Uh, when I went through a deep state of anxiety in my 20s, I and I started doing therapy and I started doing all reading all the books. I remember thinking like this is so hard. And what made it so hard was my attachment to the anxiety that I had already planned my day to day with anxiety. I already knew what life with anxiety was. And life without it was like I was missing it. So I would literally have moments of no anxiety, days of no anxiety. And it would be like you're missing your partner. You're like, oh my God. I, like I would recognize this with joy. But also like this is strange. I haven't had anxiety. Oh my God. And this is belief. I haven't had anxiety for the last two days. Wow. All it took was that recognition. And then anxiety would be right back. Like, oh, did you miss me? I'm here. So interrupting begins to break up that very strong bond that we have to negativity which we do by by nature humans are drama driven we love drama you know what are the most viewed tiktok shows or videos and the most viewed facebook videos the ones that have violence drama it's crazy but it's true so um, yeah, I want you to think about interrupting as your way when everybody's like, but how do I get rid of this anxiety? But how do I stop this cycle of dating the same guy over and over? Begin by interrupting it. And I'm going to dive into that. So I'm going to give you strategies that will really help you regain control and inject some of what you do want in your life. So let's just begin by understanding negativity. What is negativity? It is not just a feeling of sad or upsetness. And in fact, I hate when people say a feeling is negative. Feelings are just neutral. Feelings are not good or bad. They are just feelings, whatever that feeling is. But let's say that we feel that, oh, I'm being so negative. I am being so pessimistic. I'm being so pessimistic that I'm discouraging myself that my outlook in life is getting really out of color. Like there is no color in my outlook in life. That would be like a good definition of negativity. When your own perspectives discourage you from moving forward, from being an active participant of your life, from seeing the colors of this beautiful life. And the impact of negativity, especially a negative mindset, but negativity, in general, is that it impacts your mental health. It impacts your overall quality of life, your relationships, your health. So interrupting it is helpful, right? We want to interrupt it. So how, as you know, I am a mindfulness teacher and I, I often refer back to mindfulness because it is such a great teacher for most things. So uh, here's a mindfulness an awareness tip. Become an observer of your thoughts. Remember that everything in life begins with your thoughts. It was born first as a thought. Everything in your life was born first as a thought. So when you thought, oh, 
it's easier to have anxiety than to work against it, than interrupt it or heal it. Notice that thought. That became a pattern eventually, right? Pause and acknowledge without any judgment of your thoughts. So no thought is good or bad, just like your feelings. Just like you wouldn't say that cloud on the sky is a bad cloud. They're just clouds. I want you to have that kind of perception over your thoughts. They're just thoughts. But some thoughts make you think and attach to things that change your perspective in life, that take the color out of it. And so that's when you kind of observe it and say, I'm not judging it. I'm observing that thought and the impact that thought is having on me. And I can think again. Thinking again is one of my greatest tools inside Reset Your Mindset. I teach it there and it is so helpful. It really helps you change the entire experience of a neutral event. What is a neutral event? Anything. Doctor called me to go see him after I did blood work. That's all you have. That's a neutral event. Your brain is going to create a whole lot of talk about that. And you probably are going to go to that appointment freaking out. So you grab this thought, uh, think again, thought work. And you you will, like, I have it as a workbook. And so you can write down, what was the event? Doctor called me to go to the office. That was neutral. But what thoughts did I have about that? He's going to tell me I'm dying. This cannot be good. Oh, my God. What now? I can't afford to be sick. And as a result of those thoughts, what feelings did you have? Well, I'm feeling anxious. I'm feeling blah. Right, like so. What I'm teaching you here is to interrupt that um, sort of autopilot way of acting and thinking. You have to though grab pen and paper and do this exercise. It's called the thought work or the think again workbook. I'm gonna add the link at the end of this podcast to my show notes so you guys can download it. And it what it does is it helps you look at the same event from a different perspective. So once you see that the event is neutral, that your feelings and thoughts perhaps about the event were negative and had a negative impact in you, you can think again. So you look at the same event, doctor, call me. What thoughts do I choose to have about that? I don't have all the information. I don't know why he's calling me. He has something to share with me, right? Like it doesn't have to be negative. And you're going to feel extremely different based on that. What thought work tool does, what the tool does is interrupts your uh, way of thinking that is mostly um, active on its own. It's automatic. And then it makes it be conscious. You want to be conscious of how you're talking to yourself and the thoughts that you're choosing for yourself. That is probably my best tool to interrupt negativity and the kind of negativity that you have 100% control over. Listen, one of my great clients used this the other day with a friendship that turned turn sour. She's no longer serving her. She's not getting much out of the friendship other than headaches. And so the event is friendship with what used to be my best friend, is changing. And what thoughts do I have? Oh, she's a bitch. <laughs> she's blah, blah, blah. She doesn't care. She's selfish. We're so far apart. And that gives me these feelings. But we did it again from the perspective of choice. And what do you want to think about this event? Relationships transform. We had a great time together while it lasted. We've grown apart and that's okay. The experience of that same event changes drastically the moment you think again the moment you observe in awareness okay this event with these thoughts make me feel this way i don't like it it's not it's not good for me so i'm gonna think again i can't not tell you enough about this tool it is a mix of cognitive behavioral therapy with mindset coaching with mindfulness. So I don't know what you're waiting for, but 
you can download the book in which I walk you through the exercise. And if you love this type of work and want to know more, I want to remind you that the doors are open for Reset Your Mindset. This is exactly what we dive into, interrupting expectations, interrupting anxiety, interrupting uh, lack of boundaries. We work together for 12 weeks, powerful weeks, where you get to have both access to me teaching through videos, workbooks, and weekly calls as a group. This particular January, that group is specific to working mothers and or mothers who are stretched too thin and want to find balance. That's going to be the theme, although the course is exactly the same that I've always taught before. Um, and again, I'm going to teach it again in May, and that's going to be uh, focus on work-life balance. Uh, particularly to people who are experiencing burnout. More like if you want to sign up to it now, you're listening to this before December 31st, you have a massive discount. Uh, and so instead of being a two thousand dollar program, it is currently twelve hundred, and it will stay at that price until December 31st, 2023. Act now. Coming back to interrupting negativity. Physical activity changes you, your state like nothing else. Well, music, music as well. But engaging in physical activities like walking, yoga, dancing, moving releases endorphins, which actually boost your mood. And you can go from like, I'm stuck physically, I'm stuck in this feeling, to like, oh, I just got a great idea. I'm problem solving now. Some of my clients love doing their coaching sessions with me while they go for a walk. And so we both go for a walk. They are whatever they are in the world. I am here and we both walk. And what we notice is that it is helpful to shift the mindset while you're discussing things and moving. It is incredible. So if you're having a really hard moment at work and you feel that you're in like this, you know, funnel you you just see black you just see negative you just see anger resentment go for a walk go for a walk while you process what you're thinking about it will be unbelievable for you to mobilize that energy and you're gonna come back with an idea i promise you and if you don't come back with an idea because there was no problem to solve you will at the very least come back feeling refreshed renewed and process like ah. Uh, Okay, I process that. Gratitude, my friends. Oh my God, especially if you have anxiety and or depression. I've noticed this with my clients. I've noticed it in my own skin. Uh, so I'm currently on a hormone therapy treatment. And let me tell you, high estrogen in my body gives me a sensation. That somebody is following me at all times. I'm just, my heart is racing at all times. I just wake up feeling like uh, I'm being persecuted. So the smallest of thoughts can bring me into a state of stress and high stress. I understand it's due to the hormones. This has happened before to me. I can rationalize that, yet I still have the flight or fight response active in my body. You want to know what has brought me from 100 to zero? Gratitude. I sit here, like, say I'm in my office right now doing this podcast. And if one of those like waves of anxiety would show up now, I would just look around and be like, oh my God, thank you for my yoga mat that I can see from where I'm sitting. Thank you for my office. So thankful that I get to do a podcast. I'm so grateful that I have a safe home. Oh, my child is healthy and my husband is loving. That little awareness, just like, oof. Stress has walked in. I'm going to bring gratitude. The gratitude cannot not coexist with negativity. It's unbelievable. It just washes it off. So start or end your day by list listing three things that you're grateful for. Just start making of gratitude a mental habit. Gratitude shifts your focus from what's lacking to what's abundant in your life. It's just so, so powerful. I've seen it with my clients too, like deep state of depression, maybe in a moment, right? Like depression is so momentaneous at times, like it feels really dark now. And if I can bring their awareness 
to some little bit of gratitude. At first, they resisted because they're so attached to the depression. Like, well, no, Olga, if I start being grateful for things, I'm not going to be depressed anymore. And I am in a very deep state of depression right now. They didn't think that way consciously, but unconsciously. <laughs> so I speak to their unconscious mind. I'm like, just give me one thing. What are you grateful for? And then they'll tell me something. Well, I guess that I'm breathing. Wow. You guess? That's a small thing to be grateful for your life? Okay. Fine. Just, and they, they would tell me, yeah, but I don't feel strongly grateful about that. I'm like, that's fair. Still fighting. Tell me one more thing. The doors begin to open. Their changes, faces, their energy settles. They have interrupted the negative impact of depression. With what? Gratitude. Social connections, my friends. Oh my God. If the state of negativity that you're in, that you want to interrupt is isolation, which is a go-to by many of us, right? When we're not feeling great, I am guilty of that myself. If I'm not feeling, if I'm not feeling all that good in my life, I will tend to um, isolate from friends. I may not message my friends as much. I may not call my mom as much. I, I'm just like in my own head. And I never actually have the thought of like, oh, I don't want to bring this negativity to anybody because I don't feel that way. I just feel like I don't feel like talking to anybody. When I now become aware that that is me, I reach out to friends specifically and family or my supports, my therapist, my coach. Talking things out can really provide a fresh perspective and lessen the burden of negative thoughts. You know why? Because you listen to yourself. I just had a client do this. She said she had this thing that she wanted to work through for a long time and she never did because her brain kept making it seem like, oh, this is big. You're going to find something out really bad. She shares it with me. And instantly her body just like drops into the chair, like her shoulders drop. Her face changes. She did cry. She released. And I was like, that was it? <laughs> That's the thought your brain said, oh my God, this is going to be so hard. And she's like, yeah. I'm like, that happens to everybody. The relief on that woman's face was like, oh, I just love seeing that in coaching. I love when that happens when they're like, what do you mean I'm not the only person? I'm like, nope, there is a whole group of people. There's a whole bunch of humans. So that's what social connections do to us to interrupt negativity. They interrupt the isolation go to you know, response that we have that is not always helpful. Sometimes it is really helpful. But, you know, when you're isolating because you're feeling down, those just give your moment to be by yourself, but then reach out. Talk, talk to somebody. Listen to yourself. Explain what's going on and interrupt that narrative. Interrupt that, that thought that says, like, you better be by yourself. Okay? How do you implement these strategies in a daily life? How do you do this consistently? I definitely will ask you to create a practice of self-awareness. Uh, my favorite way of helping my clients create self-awareness if they haven't yet done any kind of self-development work, if they're not seeing a coach or a therapist, is by grabbing a notebook and writing down what their thoughts are on a regular basis. Uh, Atomic Habits has, is a book that has great tips on how to create new habits and the author would say that if you wanted to start a practice like that one, that you put that notebook next to something that you already do, say your coffee maker, right? Your bedside table has, I don't know, your creams that you put at night, then put it there. Put it somewhere when you want to do it on a regular basis. But start with self-awareness. Just you by yourself. Like, what, what are my thoughts telling me? How are my thoughts telling me that? And lastly, I would say get a coach get coach nothing helps you interrupt your own patterns of behavior and thought and negativity than having somebody who helps you spot them because when we are in those behaviors we're just in those behaviors it's hard for us to, to think to ourselves oh i'm in a pattern right now but when you have worked with somebody i hear my clients use those words i'm following this pattern i'm in this loop that means we've worked we've worked through those uh, they have that awareness and they have somebody to work with to help them break those through, which makes it so much easier and faster. 
So remember that interrupting negativity is a skill and it takes practice. Be patient with yourself and celebrate your small victories along the way. You have the power to change your thought patterns, to change your behavior for one that is the one that you want to. I want to invite you to go to my show notes and download my workbook, Think Again. And better yet, book a call with me, a free call with me to see if Reset Your Mindset is something that could be appealing to you. If you have more questions about it, I'm so happy to talk to you about it. From wherever it is that you are in the world, Merry, Merry, early Christmas. <laughs> Thank you for listening. I will be saying Merry Christmas, I think, the rest of the episodes until the end of the month. Uh, if you don't celebrate Christmas, happy early start of the holidays. Allow the magic that is felt this time of the year touch your heart and um, your soul because it is magical, no matter what you believe in. There is magic in the air this time of the year. So embrace it all one step at a time. Baby steps. You can do this. And I'll see you here next Monday. Bye now.